Joining us tonight is a recently elected member of the Minneapolis City Council. Please welcome to the stage, Jeremiah Ellison. Let's give it up. Hi, how's it going? Thank you so you much. Please have a seat. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, I thanks really for appreciate me. it. So, uh, how are things? How are things in your new role? You know, things are going really well. Yeah, it's yeah. been four and a half months. Um, and uh, I'm getting experience Ramadan during, uh, you know, my first Ramadan as a city council member. So that's taxing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I know the sun went down like now. So, yeah, yeah. did you have time for each time? Yeah, I did. Okay, I did. good. I'm glad that you're not doing <laughs> this interview on a, a whole day of no food. So uh, I appreciate you being here even during the Ramadan, even during the holiday. And so you were elected last November. Yep. Um, and you defeated an uh, incumbent city council member. Yep. Um, why do you think, yeah. why do you think uh, Northsiders chose you? Um, yeah, that's actually a really good question because during the campaign trail, I thought it was going to be on the issues, you know, like we were going to talk about, you know, uh, 15 now and those kind of things. Um, and people were just really upset that he didn't have community meetings. And it, basically, I was like, I will have those. And, <laughs> and, and uh, people got really excited about that. <laughs> so. What an amazing campaign <laughs> promise. I'll have them, and people are just crazy. So do you have community meetings now? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So we have, week, I have weekly open office hours that, uh, you know, that are well attended, people come to. Uh, and then I'm also developing a quarterly people's assembly um, that'll be um, it's basically a town hall, but hopefully a little bit more engaging than that. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, where do you have your uh, your weekly meetings? Uh, so I have them at Sammy's Avenue Eatery, which is a cafe on West Broadway. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I mostly reserve it for constituents. So if you stop by, I probably won't talk to you long, unless you're a constituent. Like I met one in the crowd today. So cool. come on by. Yeah. Uh, so what are those meetings like? Can you just um, walk us through a regular one of those? Yeah, you know, people come through and they have uh, uh, a lot uh, of different things they want to talk about. <laughs> right. uh, everything from, of course, the complaints around, you know, the streets not being sw swept or the garbage not being picked up. Uh, and people have really important issues that they want to make sure that I'm aware of. Like, um, you know, there's this group of folks who make sure that folks don't get um, screwed on their taxes. So I think that that, you know, they came and met with you. Please, you know, there's a Jackson Hewlett opening up. You, people should know about our services. So stuff like that. And I don't take developer meetings, so they all show up to my op open office hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why don't you take developer meetings? Uh, I think that, you know, it's not that I don't want to, you know, prioritize development. I mean, but development's going to happen. I think that developers are well represented uh, at City Hall. <laughs> they have a, a <laughs> they have a whole like kind of staff. Yeah, they have staff for that. Uh, and really, Ward Five over in North Minneapolis. Uh, I think it's it's been hard for um, residents to to really get their get their time with council members, and I want to make sure I'm giving them their time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Speaking of some of the things that you're working on right now mm -hmm. uh, at, at the council, uh, you are one of the co-sponsors uh, of a city ordinance that would raise the minimum age of buying tobacco products yep. from 18 to 21. Yep. Um, yeah, we, see some, we have some, some fans of that. Yep. Uh, I do want to know uh, that that includes vape products. Yeah. What, yeah. <laughs> And so my question to you is, what do you have against cool high school kids? So, <laughs> is it, were you just a nerd in high school? And yeah, just was like, yeah, I was Take like, oh, that, man. Dustin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pro probably exactly that. You know? Yeah. You know, I don't have anything, you know, too strongly against the, the vape guys, although there was a... <laughs> the va it is vape guys. I must <laughs> yes, <sorry>. very <laughs> intentional to say that. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the public hearing was a little funny because you had, like, these teenagers who were coming, like, thank you for saving my friends. Like, we're, you know, like, we're going to help, you know, hopefully this is going to help folks be healthier. And then it was just, like, these, you know, early 30-somethings, all dudes, uh, except, like, two... Uh, and they were we kind of fighting the these kids. Yeah, we need these vapes. <laughs> They're a health product. <laughs> no way, really? I, that's what, if you listen to them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not only to have the audacity to open a vape shop, but then to go in front of elected officials and be like, it's the same thing as like, a doctor's office, man. <laughs> Come out to the vape shop. How's that going? What, what's the status of that? Um, yeah, you know, so we, we got through the public hearing. Um, it moved through committee, uh, which means that it's going to be um, coming before council pretty soon here. Um, and um, and it, it'll be voted into, into an ordinance um, 
in the next couple of next couple of weeks. So wow, yeah. You're also a co-signer of a letter with uh, your colleague uh, Philippe Cunningham, who's also been on the show. Yep. And uh, another friend of the show, Mayor Jacob Fry. Yep. Uh, a, concerning some of the levels that the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency has found of a uh, toxic chemical called PM10 yeah. um, along the North Minneapolis riverfront. Um, and that's mainly produced by a company called Northern Metals. Can you say more about that? Yeah, well, Northern Metals is definitely a big contributor. I don't want to act like they're the only thing contributing to, to poor air quality over north. Um, but, um, but they've been identified and sort of caught red-handed and um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for them to just close. There was a settlement a couple of... <laughs> 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 Word, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they'll be closing. Cool. Um, that was before, slightly before my time, so the settlement gave them 19 months, which feels like a really long time to allow them to, to get their act together and, and out of town, but, you know, it's coming, it, the clock's ticking. So, obviously, they're closing, the clock's ticking on them. What are some other things that can be done um, to reduce the poor air quality um, in North Minneapolis? Yeah, well, man, that, that's a really big question. Um, just because the cause of the poor air quality is so, um, I don't want to use the word holistic, but I, that's the best word that comes to mind, you know? Do everything it. sort of has- Just like a vape pen. Yeah, holistic, yeah, just like right? a vape, yeah. yeah. Uh, as holistic as a vape pen. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, and so I think that you know there is uh, a really uh, a really cool policy that's been um, um, uh, tried on the south side that we're bringing over to the north side called the green zones. And so the green zones basically designates a certain segment of North Minneapolis and Northeast Minneapolis has been affected by poor air quality and uh, is going to incentivize and hopefully drive um, you know green business there. So that's going to kind of help uh, in, uh, increase. Both employment, but also uh, it'll be these will be green jobs, so they won't be the types of factory jobs that pump pollutants into the air. And I also think that we've there's the there's the lead that people are exposed to inside their homes, and then the air becomes a trigger, uh, an added trigger for you know asthma and that kind of stuff, the, the lead outside the homes. And so we've also got to tackle the lead the lead inside the homes if we want to make sure that folks are not uh, having those triggers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, that's a really important problem. Um, so what are you, so you have these two big uh, things that you're working on right now. What are you most excited to work on? What's the thing that gets you up in the morning? Yeah, I am um, really excited to figure out uh, how to solve gentrification, which sounds weird when I say it aloud. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But there have been some really smart people in some in some in some uh, cities around the country who haven't been able to figure it out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pretty much every city. Yes, <laughs> right. Right. Able to it out. Um, and, and and we're in uh, you know we're in a we're sort of in in process in the gentrification process uh, you know if you want to put it that way. Uh, but we haven't reached the the levels of uh, you know a Portland or a Seattle. Uh, I think San Francisco is in like. Uh, the unknown phase two of gentrification, which is that the original people who pushed out the original population are now being pushed out by even wealthier people. Yeah, uh, and, and after them, it's just like robots. Yeah, yeah robots just like come in. A robot city, like right. we, we can pretty much count on like the Matrix sort of bubbling up out of right, there, you yep. know, from there. So, uh, but I think being able to tackle that issue and what's the central question? How do you, you know the central question is how do you both improve a neighborhood? because people in North Minneapolis deserve to have the neighborhood improved, uh, but how do you make it so that each improvement doesn't increase the cost of rent, right. increase the cost of living, um, so that you don't then price out the most vulnerable people in that right. area? That's what we have to solve. Right, because yeah. like every nice thing that happens, it's like rich people are like, oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> right, right. We're gonna take that, yep. yeah. That's and the city job. assessor's like, that's worth more now. Yeah. So, you know, so we've gotta, we've gotta figure that out. So, uh, connected to that, uh, Mayor Fry recently announced uh, you know, a proposed $55 million for affordable housing yeah. uh, initiative uh, uh, this year in Minneapolis. Um, do you think that's realistic to, to happen? Do you think that's enough? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't want to pull the, like, I'm new here card, uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's four months. It's so, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's yeah, so from, but so from what I understand, it's a big number. Uh, <laughs> and, I tried uh, counting it, <laughs> each individual <laughs> dollar. Uh, you know, I've, I've compared it to other numbers and it's big. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have a whole team of <laughs> number crunchers. And so, uh, you know, so, so the real question will be, uh, that sounds very exciting. Right. Um, but uh, what, what's going to really, what essential programs would have to suffer 
uh, in order to make a number like that happen? And um, you know, what kind of sacrifices you know, on, a, on the positive end are we willing to make to make sure a number like that can happen? Um, and um, and you know, is it realistic? Uh, the short answer feels like no, but you know, we've got a new council, we've got a new mayor, we've got an energetic mayor with a vision, we've got council members who have a vision for affordable housing, for public safety, for uh, you know, economic development. Uh, and so we'll see. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that, that's very exciting. I, some people are about to clap. I want to, but it's Minnesota and I never should. <laughs> <laughs> With all, I mean, you're obviously tackling, you know, issues that are not specific to uh, the Twin Cities or Minnesota uh, in particular, uh, but um, do you feel like Minneapolis is on the right track? Do you feel like the issues that have been, uh, you know, standard for Minneapolis for a while are being addressed at this point? Um, I wouldn't have ran if I thought the answer was yes. Uh, and so... Uh, do I think, do I have a lot of hope in the new council and the new mayor? Yes. Do I think that things as they are, if they keep chugging along, good things will happen? Um, good things for some people, like mm. gentrification is good for someone, right? <laughs> um, but I represent Ward 5, right? Like this is the, uh, uh, the ward that has uh, the largest African American population in the city, uh, a large immigrant population, both Hmong, East African. Um, uh, and uh, uh, a lot of renters, uh, you know, I don't know that the current track will be good for us. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Switching gears, because I know that was like, <laughs> that yeah, was It wasn't like, very funny. Know, like. It wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about not being funny is like, we, we put the interview in the middle, because then we good. could ask questions like, is our city going to fall off a cliff? And you could be like, yeah. <laughs> And we could be like, great, switching gears. Um, <laughs> we've got many minutes of funny after this. I can't let you leave without mentioning the fact that you are the son of Keith Ellison, U.S. Representative and Vice Chair of the Democratic National Committee. Yep. Um, awesome. See the clap fan. for that. Yes. You know, not, not afraid to clap for that. Um, do you talk politics with your dad? Man, you know, surprisingly... We, tr you know, we spend all day in our respective sort of like political holes, right? right. Uh, and so uh, people don't know this, but he's a fan of like really bad monster movies. <laughs> like he like really loves Go Van on. <laughs> <laughs> Give me like, the dirt. Like he really loves like Van Helsing, like, like the Hugh Jackman Van Helsing, <laughs> right? And so like, <laughs> so. Oh man. Uh, so, so, we, so we, you know, so we kind of nerd out over like comics and B movies and that kind of thing uh, as much as we can. That is an amazing fact because my imagination of what your like dinner table discussion was like, politics, policy, how can we work together? And the fact that it's like, you know in Van Helsing, <laughs> when he's looking at the painting and the painting moves and that's his future? That was cool. Yep, like yep, that that's <laughs> is an amazing fact. So there you go. <laughs> oh, that brings me such joy. You know, I think the city is going to be all right. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Jeremiah Ellison, thank you so much for coming on thank the show. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Once again, Jeremiah Ellison. Ward 5 Town Member. Give it up one more time. Thank you, thank you so much.